In this video, I will introduce you briefly to the physics of Mott transitions in the Hubbard model and set out some questions that we seek to answer in two companion works using a novel renormalization group method that we have developed recently. Transitions between current carrying metallic states and insulating states that do not can be attributed to the fact that the energy spectrum of the former is gapless while that of the latter has a large gap even at room temperatures. The Mott metal insulator transition is driven purely by strong repulsive electronic interactions. The Mott transition is quantum mechanical and originates from the competing tendencies for the matter waves of electrons to delocalize across the system due to their kinetic energy and to localize in real space due to repulsion. The important question is how best to study this phenomenon in a simple model. The first work deals with the Mott transition in the half-filled Hubbard model. The zero temperature Mott transition can be easily argued for in the 2D Hubbard model on the square lattice. This model was introduced by Gutzwiller, Kanamori and Hubbard separately in 1963. The Hubbard Hamiltonian has a tight binding ne nearest neighbor hopping term with strength T, an on-site repulsion term with strength U reflecting the cost for double occupancy and a chemical potential that determines the filling of the electrons. For no on-site repulsion, this is simply the problem of free tight binding electrons in the 2D square lattice. We also expect a weakly correlated metal for on-site repulsion being much smaller than the tight binding bandwidth of 8T. On the other hand, at half filling and for the case of the repulsion being much greater than the bandwidth, double occupancy is strongly disfavored and the resulting jam state is the Mott insulator. Thus, there must be a Mott transition at some critical value of the ratio U by T. The ins this insulating state has a gap of order U for charge carrying excitations. Further, a perturbation theoretic argument for Anderson soup exchange shows that the spin degrees of freedom on nearest neighbor sites in this insulating state are antiferromagnetically correlated. Despite almost six decades of work, there are several questions that remain to be answered on this model. For instance, what is the nature of the zero temperature transition and the order parameter that tracks it? The transition clearly involves the gapping of the Fermi surface of the tight binding metal, shown in red in the figure. Can we track this transition? For this, we use a novel renormalization group method based on many body unitary transformations. We can also ask which metallic state lying at high energies does the insulating state originate from? Is the metal the well understood Fermi liquid with a quasi particle peak in the spectral function and a low temperature resistivity that goes as the square of the temperature? Or is the metal a non Fermi liquid with novel excitations and a low temperature resistivity that varies linearly with the temperature? Even the magnetic ordering of the Mott insulating state in 2D needs careful consideration. While nearest neighbor spins are antiferromagnetically correlated, the merman wagner hohenberg theorem allows true antiferromagnetic order in a 2D system only at zero temperature. Further, can the zero temperature Mott state in 2D be one with no broken symmetries? By this, we are looking for a liquid-like state of spins, which could, for instance, look like a system of resonating short-range signals. In this companion work, we apply the renormalization group method we have developed to the problem of the doped Mott insulator. Here too, there are several important and interesting questions that open up. These are related to the well-known phenomenology of the high temperature superconducting whole doped cuprate Mott insulators, whose physics is believed to arise from almost isolated two-dimensional planes of copper and oxygen atoms. The schematic temperature versus whole doping phase diagram of the cuprates shows a wealth of novel phases some of which remain to be well understood. This includes the pseudo gap in strange metallic phases. Further, there rages a debate on whether the D-wave superconducting dome is hiding a novel quantum critical point. The obvious question for us is, can the whole doped Hubbard model offer a unified explanation of the complexity of this phase diagram? As we do not have the time to provide detailed explanations here to the answers we have obtained for all the questions that we have raised, we invite you to read our companion works and discover more about our approach and the results it has yielded. We end by mentioning that our works paved the way for several further studies of the many particle entanglement of various ground states, properties of phases at finite temperatures, and the search for a physical mechanism by which to increase the critical temperature of D-wave superconductivity in the cuprates. Thank you.